Welcome back to Grade 11 Accounting. We're going to continue our lesson on Chapter 4. Chapter 4, as I had mentioned to you earlier, is about the debit and credit theory. Debits and credits are extremely important to understand in accounting. And remember uh, that debits are left side of the T account and credits are the right side of T accounts. So we're just going to quickly summarize uh, from uh, our previous discussion. Uh, you may recall that source documents are extremely important. Source documents uh, uh, ensure that you have uh, an actual evidence of your um, all your assets, liabilities, expenses, and revenues, and so on. And of course, they require. Uh, this is where you take the amounts from to to enter in your accounting records. And this implies that there is the uh, 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 that implies that there is the uh, actual evidence in your records which means that we are following the objectivity principle. So with this objectivity principle, remember that everything is based on actual documents and nothing is just an estimate. So that brings me to ledger accounts. We briefly talked about ledger accounts. Ledger accounts is a set of uh, uh, accounts, it's a record of any and all activities that are happening in this uh, particular account. So, for example, you have a, 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 a set of asset accounts, a set of liabilities account, and so on. And again, as a reminder, remember that all assets are on the debit side, normal account balances. All, all liabilities are on the, on the credit side, and all equities are on the credit side. So that is where we start our uh, T accounts with. We call them the T account because they actually physically look like a T account and left side again is the debit and the right side is the credit. Now some of the important features of ledger accounts at all times assets must equal liabilities and equities. So in order for you to do that you must have uh, two entries one debit and one credit equaling each other. Some the rules of accounting the rules of debits and credits are extremely important and in these rules uh, you can see from this visual it's very clearly laid out that we always follow the accounting equation and that debit uh, ensures that you have an increase in assets and credit ensures that you have a decrease in assets and liabilities and equities increase through credits and decrease through debits so uh, that was a brief summary from the past lesson. Again, to emphasize the rules of debit and credit, remember, always remember that in accounting, debit only means the left side of the account, and credit means the right side of the account. And you can see the rules spelled out in this slide. You can see that for assets, debit increase and credits decrease. And for liabilities, debits decrease and credits increase and that's the same for owner's equity so debit and credit rules actually follow what we call the double accounting double entry accounting system in this sense what this means is that for every debit or for every amount that we have for our debits we have an equal amount in the credit side so in this case assets must always equal liabilities and equity because one side is debited and other side is credited. So each transaction must have a debit and it must have a credit, at least one. You can have multiple debits and multiple credits, but the total amount should always equal each other. So debits should always equal credits. Very clearly laid out in this slide. <coughs> and these debits and credits always result in changes in at least two accounts. So each transaction ensures that there is a change in two accounts. Remember, do not ever think in terms of a debit being an increase or a credit being a decrease. Do not think that way. In accounting, debits only mean the left side and credits only mean the right side. Now, how do you calculate the balances as far as those accounts are concerned? So the account balance gives the dollar value of an account and shows whether it is a debit or a credit value. 
So debits and credits have opposite effects as you saw from the rules. One goes up, the other goes down. To calculate the balances, what you do is you take a look at the T account and you, take, uh, uh, you add up all the debits and you add up all the credits on that T account and then you see and you take a difference and then you see where it should be. If it's an asset account, the end result really should be on the debit side. If it's a liability account, the end result should really be on the credit side. So you must always take a look at that. The next slide gives you a visual. You can see that there are several accounts, several entries happening under each T account. Take a look at the bank account. You see three transactions on the debit side and three transactions on the credit side. And then you total both of them, the debit side and the credit side, and you take a difference. And the difference in this case goes on the debit side because bank account is an asset. And as long as there's a positive number, it should be on the debit side. So that's how you add and that's how you take a look at all these uh, T accounts which comprises your ledger in the end. Now we're going to move on to a, a, a somewhat different topic within this uh, presentation and this topic involves buying and selling on account. So this is learning terminology. A lot of accounting as I have mentioned earlier in the previous lessons is learning different types of uh, different types of terminology and understanding the language of accounting so when we say on account what we mean is that it can be purchased on account it can be sold on account it can have a payment on account or it can have a receipt on account now these refer to accounts receivables and accounts payables so remember to read this thoroughly understand what this means on account you can be on one side of the on account transaction or the other side of the on account transaction meaning that you can have a customer who will pay you on account or you can be the customer of, of someone else who will pay on account so you can have a receivable or you can have a payable so this is just referring to receivables or payables the next slide deals with uh, another different topic which is the trial balance so the trial balance is not a financial statement. Let me emphasize that again. A trial balance is not a financial statement. This is a, 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 an actual uh, worksheet where a lot of the information is summarized and hence the name trial balance. This is where you actually balance by trial and error. So all your debits must equal all your credits. And once you have that, you know that you have done all the transactions at least somewhat correctly. There may be errors in the trial balance, but the majority of the time, once everything is balanced, you're okay. And you must do this before you create any of the financial statements. So remember, you cannot move on to creating a balance sheet, which is the, ba the statement that we discussed in earlier. You cannot create a balance sheet without having a trial balance. In the trial balance, everything is, is uh, clearly laid out and it actually helps you balance and that is why we call it the trial balance. So the next slide entails how do you create a trial balance. I'm calling uh, TB short for trial balance. So a, a TB is a list of accounts and their balances at a given time. So it, it gives you all your debits and credits of all the accounts including all the accounts that you have not looked at as of yet, which we will in the next couple of chapters. So the primary purpose of a trial balance is to prove that debits and uh, equal credits. A trial balance can also uncover some of your errors. So how do you produce a trial balance? Like every other uh, worksheet of financial statement, what you need to do is write a three line heading at the top, which is you know your, the, the, your uh, company's name, the word trial balance and the date and then you list all the account titles and their balances in the debit and credit side you total the debit and credit and hope that the debits equal credit if they do not equal each other then you must go back and actually try to see where your errors are so all the debits equal credits why is a trial balance important it is essential to have all these ledger accounts, all these T accounts balance before you go into producing your financial statements. This is where the accounting equation must always be followed as you remember. 
an out of balance ledger and an out of balance trial balance is an, a sign that an error has been made and you must correct that error. All errors must be found and corrected before you move on to financial statements. If you do not correct your errors, it the financial statements become useless. And remember, users are the ones uh, looking at financial statements and they need to ensure that you've got the right, you have to ensure that you've got accurate financial statements for your users so they can make correct decisions based on the, the, the financial statements. So again, this chapter is extremely critical. I emphasize that you might need to watch these videos a couple of times, perhaps even review them prior to your assessments and for your assignments in order for you to understand. And of course, remember, practice makes perfect. So thank you for watching. And as always, ARTW, accounting rules the world.